I'm really excited because it feels like customer success, which is one of Salesforce's core values, it's one of the five core values, it's never been more pertinent, it's never been more important, and it's never been more front and center for the organization. I mean, and again, I haven't been at the organization for 23 years, but it's what I hear, it's what I feel. So joining, that, that's why I'm excited because it feels like all roads have come back to the most important thing, which is customer success. How much does a company's culture truly matter? Welcome to Marketing Trends. I'm Jeremy Bergeron. Today, we're pleased to welcome Paul Stoddart, the CMO of Customer Success and Growth at Salesforce, who we're proud to say sponsors this show. Thank you, Salesforce. With an impressive resume that includes work at IBM, Microsoft, and Epicor, among others, Paul joins us to talk about his first six months working at Salesforce and why its customer-centric philosophy and family culture are essential to its success. And speaking of Salesforce, I wanna give a special shout out to them before we jump into this podcast with Paul. Salesforce brings marketing and engagement together. Learn more at salesforce.com forward slash marketing. Now let's get into it. What are you most excited about right now in your role? Like what's, what are you most pumped about right now? Um, I think in Salesforce terms, the reason I joined is the reason I am most excited right now. Um, so if you think a little bit of a, um, a checkered quick history of, you know, Paul's World, a harbor tour cruise, if you like, came from a big corporate product background, all of that good stuff, did a CMO role, then went into an organization doing consulting to other organizations about marketing, then went back into being a CMO. And throughout that journey, I've been interacting with Salesforce. I've either been a customer, and I've been a customer more than once, and I've also sold Salesforce as being you know, part of the consulting piece, the practices. We, we looked after all marketing platforms, but Salesforce definitely was one of the fastest growing um, practices we had. And I've implemented Salesforce many times with many customers. So the reality is being a customer and working with customers, trying to make you know, sure they're getting the value that they need to from uh, the investment they've made, I think you have a really unique view about the the company that you're interacting with. And you know, there was no doubt in my mind that we've got some great marketing platforms out there. Um, Salesforce is more than just a, a marketing platform I think we all appreciate. But the the reality is, as a customer, there were it felt to me like I was navigating Salesforce versus Salesforce was helping me navigate all of the the incredible things that it had. So when the opportunity was to kind of like go on the inside and be like, hey, be the customer on the inside, you know, help the customer think about you know how do we translate what we do and make sure that our customers can be successful that actually they get the right assets at the right time, that actually they get um, access to the, you know, the right talent, the capabilities, um, you know, the success ecosystem, as we would call it. Hard not to take that on board, right? It's like if, you, if you've been on the other foot and you're kind of like, hey, I, I know the pains. Um, I also know all of the upsides, not all of them, many of the upsides. So I'm really excited because it feels like customer success, which is one of Salesforce's core values, it's one of the five core values, it's never been more pertinent, it's never been more important, and it's never been more front and center for the organization. I mean, and again, I haven't been at the organization for 23 years, but it's what I hear, it's what I feel. So joining, that, that's why I'm excited, because it feels like all roads have come back to the most important thing, which is customer success. Wow, that's, that's so interesting. Was this role created prior to you joining? Was this a new role created, or was this already... It, it, it was in place. So it's been in place in, in different iterations. Um, okay. I think everyone comes with you know their own flavor and, and thing. And part of joining was revisiting some of the historic work. And it's always a blessing when you join an organization where you're kind of like, wow, I am just surrounded with like such incredible talent. And you look at the work that was ongoing or the, the remit of the team before and you go, you know, this is this is directionally really sound. It's really good. I think what people have reminded me, and you know, you have to remind yourself is, you know, what I do come with is that customer experience, and you know, that, therefore that unique um, point of view. So there'll there'll be a few things tweaked here and there to um, optimize towards that, and maybe um, change a little bit of direction. But yeah, the the role was always there. Um, they're just always a little bit different based on different leaders. Wow. So what were what were some of the initial things that you 
changed, I guess, on the, on the, how did you kind of double down on customer experience, having all this really cool experience prior? What are there kind of some, were there some low hanging things? You're like, okay, I see these two or three things we're going to change right away based on my experience, implementing Salesforce, knowing Salesforce, selling Salesforce. What are some of those early things you did or didn't do? Yeah, I, I think you and I discussed in the last time we did our, our podcast about, you know, hey, brands are internally focused and externally felt. For me, the first thing is to really spend that time dwelling on on the inside and like, hey, do we have things set up for success? So I would say there hasn't been that much changing, to be honest with you, Jeremy. It's been more about um, optimization. So one of the interesting parts, and this is a little bit too inside baseball, but the marketing team that I now lead wasn't actually part of the core marketing function till I joined. It was part of the decision of when I came on board, a few of the, the key people who were part of that hiring process, if you're like, well, you know, this is the opportunity to bring customer success you know, right back into the core experience. Again, why, why I'm so excited about the role. So one of the first things has been about, let's understand what that really means. You don't want to disrupt all of the good things that the team already do, but you want to look at you know, the, the core marketing capability, which is a mega, mega super talented group and go, okay, how do you dock into this, you know, excellence and expertise and scale what we're doing? You know, we're doing good already. How do you accelerate that to great by working with these other great people? Um, there's nothing like being in the same organization to be a, a forcing function, if you like, to you know, drive things forward. So that's been one of those. That was kind of like decided before I joined. I was part of the conversation and I'm glad I was. Um, but I'd say that's, you know, I've only been here six months now. So that's been a, a big part and as part of the, uh, you know, the internally focused, externally felt, just getting make, making sure that the fundamentals are in place. So as we're describing what we do, why we do it, how we do it, um, we're re-educating our stakeholders, but also this new organization, you know, within Salesforce as well, or, or the core marketing team. We we have to, if you like, re-establish, hey, this is what we do and why, and, you know, let's, let's make friends. Um, so it's been a lot about the the internal uh, so that we can expedite and accelerate the external stuff to come. Is it across all of Salesforce's products that you sit on customer success across all of them? Oh, yeah. I mean, Salesforce, when okay. they think about a customer, they think of a customer in um, customer 360. Uh, that That is their actually how they, they think about um, you know their capability, the products, and our customers. So, yep, it, uh, customer success relates to the full customer three hundred and sixty. Everything we do. What are some of the things you do to kind of reach across the aisle and build trust and rapport and align with other stakeholders? You said there's a bit of reeducation happening, and you know, kind of reign- reignition around this this maybe new vision or angle that's being presented. Um, but that does require you to talk to many people in many different ways. So we probably talked about this before. The marketing leader role is one of the most interesting in the ELT. And so now I, I see you with really depth and breadth of, of marketing experience now at the helm of customer success for an incredible marketing organization, which means you have to work really well with other stakeholders. And I'm just curious of like, what are some of the things that have worked well for you, again, at the size and scale of a sales force? Yeah, I, th- I think um, this is where experience plays, right? May- maybe 15 years ago, I would have thought this is an easy game to play, but uh, you're absolutely right. It's one where um, you have to have the humility to be able to learn from you know their great experience. I genuinely say this where um, I think I've been lucky in my career where I've been blessed to work with some exceptional talent. I've worked in other organizations as well where it's been about raising the bar. Salesforce is just a, you know, you're in rarefied air with the, the people you work with. So I'm um, very, very lucky in that respect. Um, and I do believe in being a learner. So the reality is I want to seek to learn. It was a big part of why I joined Salesforce was because I don't think I, I've figured it all out yet. Um, and I think there's stuff to, to learn from everywhere. I don't know if it's a secret to success, but, you know, hey, spend the time to understand what people are doing and what's working well before, you know, maybe imparting your your own wisdom. That said, I would say I have never been in an organization, and I don't want to be overly uh, Pollyanna about um, this organization. I'm I'm definitely in the honeymoon period, right? I'm six months in, so, uh, you know, come come with these biases. But uh, (laughs) there is a welcoming atmosphere at Salesforce, which is, almost a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, you know, Mark talks about, um, you know, the Ohana is the family, the extended family with our customers. And that is how the company is run. So the the reality is, um, you know, maybe in prior organizations, you felt like maybe you have to, you know, kind of like crack the door open or force the door open. 
for the vast majority of conversations at Salesforce, people are welcoming you through the door and you, you have to just be a little bit careful of a, you know, over overreaching, overstretching yourself. So, uh, yeah, it's a, a blessed environment in that respect. I think, uh, you know, it, when they describe it as an Ahana or a family, it's what, what you join, you, you're part of it. So uh, less, less having to break through those doors, more about, uh, you know, feeling comfortable walking through them. What's that you said, Ohana? Ohana, yeah, Hawaiian. Oh, what it, yeah, what is that? What is this? Believe it, it means family. Ohana, okay, I have not I have not heard that. Okay. That's the a term that's being used internally that Salesforce uses to yeah, talk the, about the it. Salesforce it's, culture it's, is yeah, the Salesforce oh. culture is rooted in in uh, you know, Hawaiian. So um I don't know the story as prolifically as others, but you know, um Mark's got a deep connection with Hawaii. Um he certainly okay. he spends um, a lot of time there and you know, it, it's very much how he thinks of the culture. Um, thinks of people. So uh, it's a special environment. Has anything surprised you? I mean, look, you, you if anyone takes the moment to, to to Google Paul Stoddart, you'll see that this amazing man has had a lot of experience in marketing and marketing leadership. It's just true, as Paul politely uh, smiles, but it's true. So you have all this, you know, all this experience. You understand what it takes to lead marketing globally. So you have a lot of a lot of wisdom. You have a lot of perspective. You could do many things as a marketing leader. You chose to go to Salesforce. Any surprising things now in the first six months that you're like, wow, I didn't realize that was the case, or you know, an interesting learning or a lesson that maybe yeah surprised you about jumping into Salesforce? It's a great question. I think I've covered a couple of them, right? Which is it is people and customer obsessed. That surprised you? Well, in many organizations. You know, you have your values on the wall, right? They're they're all listed up there, and at Salesforce, they're they're not just listed. These are deliberate. These are these are everyday actions. They they live them. They believe them. Um, they make decisions by them. And I I would say that isn't true of every organization. I think many organizations have like their sixteen leadership principles. And by the way, there's our company values on the right hand side. It's like, are they different? Should they be different? You know, what are your brand attributes? Are they different than your, your company values? And I, I kind of look at uh, Salesforce and I'm like, you know, they've got five values. Um, they live by them. They make decisions by them. Um, they measure by them. Uh, they lead by it's like It's like everything other companies have a, a different mechanism to, you know, solve for their business. Salesforce, it kind of roots all the way back to, to those values, whether it be sustainability or equality, Obviously, innovation. We have trust. Trust is the number one, and then, and then, like I say, customer success is the fifth. And by the way, not in that order. Trust is number one. Customer success is number two. These are, like I say, they're not just words, um, and that that's always going to be a little bit surprising. You know, sometimes they can be things that, that are an afterthought, you know, part of a brand framework, but not something that you you truly activate on a day to day basis. So that's that's pretty special. Um, so that that focus on the people. You know, make really again rooted in the values. Our customers rooted in the values. That was a little bit surprising because um, it's just so. It's a conscious bias to work towards them, and um, I love that. Um, I think it's what creates great culture. That was surprising um, in a very very positive way. I think the the other surprises, and it shouldn't have been a surprise because I've known Salesforce for, for so long, but Salesforce is like unrelenting you know, focus on innovation and the acquisitions they've made. There's so much more than what I think, you know, even I appreciate it. Um, and I thought as a CMO, I had implemented everything I could implement from Salesforce. You know, I'd just done Service Cloud, Marketing Cloud, Datarama, Tableau, Journey Builder. It's like, I, I thought I'd done like it. And then you know, on the inside, you're like, oh, wow, there's just like so much more capability than, you know, you, you ever realize. And that's the same for any enterprise software company, but that's pleasant as well. And if you wanted a third one, which surprised me, from the outside looking in, I always felt like the, the trailblazer and the characters, you know, the way they personify their brand was a little bit obscure. When you're on the inside and you're deeply rooted in working with customers, maybe I should have recognized this as someone who had sold into so many customers. But it's like all of the resources are, are there for you on, you know, Trailhead, Trailblazer, enabling people. It kind of comes back to the values again, but it's about democratizing the information to allow people to be successful. And that's unusual. You know, normally people want to like keep that knowledge. It's like knowledge is power and Celsius is like, let's give it to you, all power to you. It's like, let's make you be successful. So if I had my time again, I wish, you know, for the past 10 years, I was 
consulting clients a little bit different of a, you know, go dig into those resources which are there because it's going to only, you know, empower you to do things better. Nice surprises coming in. That's fantastic. I love, I love all those. What are some of the metrics that you are paying attention to in your role? Is there a lot around retention in your role? Uh, is it a mix between retention and other things? Like, and has that been re- reprioritized because of the world's changing so much? But what are some of the metrics that you're like, okay, I'm looking at these regularly? Yeah, it's a bit of a mix. And it's a um, an area of ongoing refocus or, or growth, if you like. So um, I'd say some of the, you know, the most obvious ones, NPS, um, you know, we're looking in its like, if we think back academically to the, you know, pre-sale, sell, post-sale, um, customer success really is more of the, the post-sale motion, um, although we'll get to it in a second, I really do believe drives the pre-sale and the sale, as, as we all know. So NPS is critical, you know, your intent to recommend, um, you know, how could that not be a, a focus? Um, retention or attrition, um, again, you know, we all know it, it's so much harder and costs so much more to find someone than it is to, you know, keep someone. And with the level of investment that I think Salesforce puts into their trailblazers, their community, uh, the success ecosystem, um, you know, that's that's obviously you want to make sure that what you're doing is is paying off um, or, you know, making sense to the people. So they're two like really obvious ones. What I would say is with me joining, um, part of the conversation has been a, um, and I think we discussed this last time, Jeremy, about the sustainability flywheel how actually um, marketing can help drive the infinity loop, if you like, of pre-sale, sell, post-sale. Um, that actually, they're not three distinct things. It's actually all part of the same cycle and it's ongoing as a relationship. So there is opportunity for us as we think about customer success of a, how do you help them get the maximum value out of their investment um, beyond what they might even be able to recognize? Um, and that therefore might be next best action. It might be sharing learning opportunities. It might be new product capabilities, but they're all growth metrics. There'd be more traditional demand journey type metrics that we'll spend more time focusing upon. You've got to listen so well to the, you, know, you have all these products that, are, that Salesforce is, you know, it's a big portfolio of products and, you know, a lot of stakeholders and teams that support those, right? So you have a lot of you know, in some ways, I think silos of information or fire hoses that could be coming at you all the time, right? Of all these marketing cloud and lightning cloud and all the things, they're all interesting and their audiences are all a little bit different. And and so what kind of mechanism do you put in place to be able to get the right kind of feedback that you need to, to lead customer success at the level you're leading? Is there any non-traditional things that you do to keep your ear to the ground? Because to me, you have to be hearing the right things to make the right changes. And I could also see how it could be maybe overwhelming if like everyone's coming at you with the things that they think should work well, right? What does that look like for you now across a, a pretty big portfolio? Jeremy, you're, you're making this sound like a Salesforce ad right at this point, but um, I, I don't mean it to be. I, I think one of the the best, uh, and I wouldn't say it's non-traditional, I, I'd say this is, you know, best in class. We use Slack, you know, and we use Slack prolifically. You know, we are digital first. We live and die by our, our tools. There's no question about it. And Slack is the ultimate in democratization of, of information. That's what it was designed for. So the reality is, you know, it's about, you know, leaning in and using those tools um, because everyone else is in the organization. There's an element of you have to take self-control, right, of a I'm going to seek information, but I'm also going to be willing to share information. Back to our prior point, knowledge isn't power unless it's democratized to everybody to be able to utilize and, you know, gain the power from it. So Slack is core to how we work, ultimately is kind of the core premise of how do you make sure that you're abreast of things. I will say a shout out to my team. I would say the customer success marketing organization has got a unique job. I wouldn't say it's more difficult than others. But to your point, you know, we've got an incredible product marketing organization. Each of the cloud businesses is actually run by a lady called Shannon Duffy, who's absolutely amazing. Her organization is, you know, as buttoned up as you could ever want and as deep, as deep, as deep in, you know, the products and the the needs of the customers. If you think across her portfolio, and then you come to, to mind where we're, we're on the customer success side. We now have to cross the breadth of that portfolio, but also help share. And then these are the capabilities and offerings we have from a success side, because we have our success plans. We have professional services. We've got an incredible partner ecosystem. We've got you know app exchange with all of our ISVs. 
So there's a second set, if you like, of offerings that Lego Brick, uh, am I allowed to say that brand? Uh, we all know I, I love that brand. It's like they, those things have got to dock together. So our team have got to have a, a great breadth understanding of the the capabilities and a depth and you know join things together as well. So uh, kudos to my team. I'll, I'll give them a shout out. This is where they are true utility breadth and depth players, but core to it or, you know, I won't lie. I think Slack is... That's the way we will make sure that we're connected into the right channels to make sure we're getting the right information. I get the privilege of interviewing a lot of marketing leaders, right? And and I get to see inside of the organizations and and talk about how they're how they build teams and and their perspectives. And and Salesforce, of course, is a big partner of ours too. And they are just some of the best marketers, like by by far. I mean, it's like when we have an opportunity to interview or just connect and collab with Salesforce executives when we do in-person events or when we go to their events, like Salesforce legitimately is such a leader in marketing leadership. So brag all you want, because I think I know a lot of other marketing leaders listen in very carefully to what Salesforce is doing. It's just because of the the marketing DNA that's inside the organization that you know so well now. It's like it's there's a something there's a through line of of marketing inside of Salesforce that is it's magical, the things that are being created there and how they do it at scale. So um, I, I appreciate that. And shout out to Slack. If you can leverage that the right way, ah, it can be tremendous, you know? It, it's an incredible tool. There's no question about it. And I, I will just pile on again. I think you're, you're right with the talent. I get asked often and frequently and all of the other um, synonyms of the same word of a, you know, hey, why'd you go from being the CMO of a multi-billion dollar, very successful organization and then and go into to Salesforce? Well, I mean, obviously there's the, hey, the math of it is it's a bigger organization. So the scale of what you're doing, it is growth um, no matter how you look at it. But the reality is I look at my peer set and these are phenomenal marketeers um, and there is nothing like running in a pack. Um, you know, I, I'm a runner. I like running. It's like you, you do good long runs and you, you get everything out. But when you're running as a group, it feels different. It feels special. And when you're running with people who are pushing you, then it feels, you know, even better as well. You, you feel like you're, you're learning. So, um, yeah, we're, we're very lucky, very privileged. I've got a, a great peer set um, and, you know, still learning every day. Fantastic. Is there anything that you're doing to experiment with customer success at all? Like, is, is there a segment or a portion of your approach that you are, are doing things more maybe future focused or, you know, just, you know, an R&D portion of like, hey, we're going to try these things and, and do it consistently. Is that does that exist at all for you? Um, I would say it's really around messaging right now. So, uh, you know, Part of my listening tour was, you know, just listening internally, but also connecting with um, customers. We're a fantastic events um, organization, so we get lots of opportunity to be connecting with different cabs and MVPs and, you know, getting that feedback. Like I used to feel as a customer, it can feel like the cognitive load is on the customer to figure out Salesforce. I take that personally and I, I look at, you know, my role as a, okay, how do we now simplify and make it easier for people to get to um, the, the pockets of information easier? Um, you're not going to be able to get everyone to everything every single time, but if you can get them to the right place um, and, you know, get there faster and, you know, with the right tools then it will all work out. So um, messaging is a big part of that. We'll definitely be doing some testing and innovation uh, around that and thinking about, you know, how do you bring that to market as well in a, a very Salesforce kind of way. Um, so, you know, that that would be the, the big test, um, which okay. is challenging. I mean, candidly, Jeremy, it's like we have, like you said, the product organization that is very distinct, very powerful, very clear on, you know, the the value of the the products that we, we bring to market. Um, we have got an incredible ecosystem our, our partner ecosystem is is second to none and then internally you know our success capability whether it be customer success our experts or whether it be our professional services all of these things all come together to be the success ecosystem they all speak slightly different languages they all, all got their um, different offerings if you like um, but they do all come together um, and it's for a customer to be able to like pick and choose you know what's right for, for them so you know that's that will be the message test of how do you bring the offerings the capabilities the the holisticness of it to, together so that it all makes sense it's not complex but it is complex and it's always difficult and hard to you know affect change so we'll see how it goes did you take time or is it part of your approach to take time and meet with other 
marketing leaders that are customers of Salesforce? Because you have so many industries, right? And so many products, again, that's serving these industries. Like, so are you going and like sitting down with the CMO of a, a, a big partner or a big company and like actually meeting with them? Is that part of your kind of onboarding, if you will, into that role? Yeah. Yeah, a- absolutely. I won't name names, but we were recently at the the London World Tour. You know, we have Connections, which is our major uh, marketing event. Fabulous, fabulous event. I mean, the energy of marketeers right now, by the way, this this was an event probably six weeks ago now, a few thousand marketeers in a room is something to behold. It really is. You know, I think marketing has never been more energized to, you know, be out there doing great, great things um, for customers. Um, so seeing all of those and working in the Salesforce platform was fairly incredible. Um, so yeah, we get an opportunity there to, again, do the, you know, the advisory boards, meet the MVPs. A lot of it is just, just listening. There's no question about it. Um, I think maybe... Um, I brought a little bit of solace to some people because like, hey, I, I was in your shoes not six months ago and I feel what you're saying or, hey, here's what I've learned from being on the inside. But I would say from Sarah down, well, for really from Mark and Brett down, so the, the co-CEOs um, and Sarah, it's all about engaging with customers as often as you can. There's no other truth teller um, like a, a customer is. So um, yeah, we're, we're all encouraged to do so and we all do so you know, willingly, gladly and probably think it's one of the most important parts of the job. What was the event? Connections. Oh, Connections. The one in, in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was fantastic. We were we were this close to actually attending that event. We were planning and then things shifted, but I heard it was an amazing one. So that's awesome. It um, was. Okay, that's cool. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, just trends and predictions. You know, a lot of what keeps coming up is AI and machine learning at marketing. And so a lot of B2B companies are, are talking about this. And so we just love your perspective. How how are you using AI and machine learning in your world at Salesforce currently? What's that look like? And then what do you think AI and machine learning is going to unlock for marketing leaders in the future? AI, machine learning, I'll, I'll put it in the bucket of automation as well, is core to everyone's strategy one, one way or another, whether it be a you know, how do you drive next best action? Or is this something that can help through the creative process, maybe message testing, et cetera? There is a team um, of people, you know, in the marketing organization, which are are purely focused on on that on a, a daily basis. And I'd go as far as it can also go as deep in automating things like your reporting um, and ensuring that you know you're getting the right information to people at the right time. So um, I would say not necessarily this is something in my purview. I take advantage of it from a Salesforce perspective because there is a team that, that does it on our behalf. You know, maybe more on the trend side, what what do I think or see? I mean, I do think it's going to become more core into to what we do. Machine learning homes in on something, uh, whereas the marketer should be honing on that thing. Um, and I think the, the combination of the two th- together is, is where the, the magic happens. I remember 10 years ago, it was, it was 10 years ago, uh, we were working on, you know, automation of different creative assets and also on, uh, you know, creating ads in real time, you know, changing messaging on real time based on, you know, click through rates, etc. It, it's only getting um, better and more. You know, the tools will get better. I think marketers will shift how they think about their roles. So, you know, really about um, dialing in um, as opposed to, you know, having to run breadth efforts. But as as much as automation is is fantastic, and I think it, and it is, um, I think we've got bigger challenges as marketers to be thinking around. So I, I think first party data is, you know, you'll you're hear us talk about this a lot at Salesforce. It was one of the reasons why I knew Salesforce was a place that, I wanted to invest in as a CMO, but also I wanted to be as a CMO because it is the two to three steps ahead. I mean, now it's real, but it's the two to three steps ahead of what we all have to solve for that I don't think people quite yet recognize. And I think once the world of Web3 starts kicking in, now I am giving you Paul's future, it's like Web3, the combination of that with um, how we think about first-party data in conjunction with automation and machine learning, then marketing is a completely different sphere and place. Um, and that's what we've got to prepare for um, as marketeers, but also as Salesforce. That's what we've got to enable. Well, you brought it up. I wasn't going to say anything, but you said Web3. So I got to ask, yeah. is there, what, what is some of the utility you're finding uncovering regarding Web3? You know, what are some of the things you're excited about, things you can share? Oh, it's an evolving space. Um, so, you know, there's the, the Salesforce perspective. And obviously we, we have, um, you know, tools and clouds, which are 
are focused um, in those areas, some very directly like NFT cloud. I am very pleased with the approach that the company has taken on recognizing some of the downsides of NFTs and actually being deliberate about its decisions. So which blockchains do you think about um, from an environmental perspective plays very closely to our value of sustainability. So it's like, you can't be an innovator and not break ground. At the same time, you've got to be conscious of what you're doing. So there's a real balance there that I think um, Salesforce, you know, strikes well. I think Mark and Brett, you know, hold people really accountable to, you know, you dial up, you dial down um, accordingly for sure. I think there's tangential capabilities that go to that as well from a Salesforce perspective, um, like the net zero cloud. So really helping people become um, zero carbon economies. They're all Salesforce players and they're doing the right things and they're doing them the, the right way. And I, I love being part of it. From Paul's perspective, Paul's personal perspective, you know, I would be regurgitating what everyone else has has said for the, you know, the last 18 months, which is we are back at the days where people recognized um, the internet was about to happen. Um, and what we're seeing today is not the truth of the next five to 10 years. So what feels innovative or provocative, we're still trying to rebuild the existing, but with this new technology and capability. The art of what's possible hasn't even been imagined. And that's what's so exciting. And in the same way as no one could imagine people walking around with a, you know, a smartphone that had your email on it, let alone that, you know, it might have your driving license or your your bank card on it and you could just tap it and pay for things. I mean, 10 years ago, that was impossible to, to even believe that could be true. You know, that's where I kind of look at things like cryptocurrency, or, you know, or what is the, the art of what the smart contract and NFT could do? You go, the, we haven't even imagined it yet. It's kind of a mind blowing space. It's pretty exciting. Indeed. Like you, I'm paying a lot of attention to see where things go, especially in the B2B world. I've, I mean, I'm always curious about how, yeah, how things will unfold there with the utility in, in B2B. It's so, so interesting. Cool. All right. You ready for some lightning round questions, some fun ones? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. And these will be different than the last time. So, you know, we'll have a separate segment. Uh, before I read these, I want to give a, Paul, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, uh, who won't be a surprise to you. Salesforce sponsors marketing trends. So big special shout out to Salesforce. Uh, when you think about Salesforce, you think about marketing and engagement being brought together. If you're a marketer or a marketing leader, head over to salesforce.com forward slash marketing for more information. We've got Paul Stoddart in the virtual studio, uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Customer Success and Growth at Salesforce. Paul, are you ready for the first question? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Now, this is lightning round, so try to be as quick, answer from the heart as quick as you can. Okay. First question. Last time you tried something new? Oh, I don't know. Probably this weekend, and it was probably a drink my wife made. She's, she's a prolific cocktail maker. Okay. What is a life lesson you learned the hard way? Uh, be a learner, not a knower. I love that one. What's one activity that makes you lose track of time? If it was going to be anything, it's probably TikTok, which I, I really, really hate to admit, but I don't <laughs> tend to lose track of time. I'm pretty goal-oriented. Um, confession, I just deleted TikTok off my phone for the, I don't know, 12th time uh, because I'm like, okay, I'm taking it off. So we'll see how long it lasts this time. If you could choose one book as a mandatory read for all high school students, which book would you choose? Okay, it's not on my bookshelf. But, um, and it's a really trite one, Jeremy, but it's called Walk the Talk. It's very simple, but it's kind of a, do what you say. It's, it's a bit of a, you know, eat apple pie book, but it's true. Would you rather lose all of your old memories or never be able to make new memories? Uh, there's a story behind this one, but lose old memories. What is something that you're betting on for the future? Web3. If you have to build a marketing team from scratch, tomorrow Mark calls you and says, hey, I need you to build a team from scratch. We have nobody. What's the first role you're hiring and why? It would be an ill-defined role name, but it is a breadth and depth marketeer. What is something that impresses you? Quality. If you had access to a time machine, where and when would you go? I would probably go back to the Victorian ages, like Queen Victoria that sounds very uh, British, doesn't it? Imperialistic. I don't mean it to be. Um, I would go back to the Victorian ages. Um, I think it was just another time of innovation um, that would be fascinating to kind of like see and live through. Now, you've achieved a lot of great success in your career. You've done some amazing things for some epic companies. What is success for you now? What is success for Paul Stoddart now? 
Um, it, it's been the same for a long while, but you keep honing the the practice. But it's it's recognizing it's not about you; it's about everyone else. So that was something a great leader at Microsoft once said: leadership is the day you recognize it's about everybody else and not about you. So keep keep doing that. What is your favorite app on your phone? It's like Strava. Oh. Okay. What is a skill that you believe everyone should have? You might not define it as a skill. Um, I think it's something you have to keep practicing as curiosity. That's my all-time favorite. Love that. That word never gets old for me. Um, If you could effortlessly pick up a new skill in a moment, what skill would it be? Languages. Any particular one? No, not not particularly. I I just think people who are fluent in languages um, deserve the the ultimate respect. It's a great way to show courtesy to other human beings. And uh, as English people, we we rely on something which isn't ours to to give. Got it. Okay. Last question. What is one thing you would like to do this year that you've never done before? Open a coffee shop. Okay. That's the first. We've never heard that. Nice. Cool. Paul, thank you so much for being here. This was a a very insightful conversation. Uh, Congratulations to you again, sir. Uh, All the success to you and the team there at Salesforce. And this this was epic. So thank you for being a part of Marketing Trends. You are awesome. No, thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for more great marketing interviews with today's top industry leaders. And thank you to our partners at Salesforce. Salesforce brings marketing and engagement together. Head over to salesforce.com forward slash marketing.